Seems like we were just here 24 hours ago. King Suns tonight. A um, little bittersweet coming off of last night, right? We want to get your thoughts on that. Uh, the big news, De'Aaron Fox says the ankle's fine. I'm going to go with what he says, but man, that is tough to believe. But uh, we'll talk about it more on the other side. The Suns are rested. The Kings are not. Does it really matter? If the Kings win tonight, we can get into that as well. Want to get your comments. And you know what? I don't usually do this. I'm going to call you out, Scuba. There's no way you're not watching the game, bro. I appreciate that you're watching our shows, but you got to you got to get a little game in you, right? A little bit, Scuba. I know you said that last night, so uh, well done by you. If that's the case. Appreciate that, man. Uh, Nurko means a lot. We we grind here. We really, really grind for you guys. And we're going to be announcing some really cool stuff. I, I'm not sure if it's going to drop tonight, but Grant will probably talk about it tonight. So make sure you're tuned for that. Cody, what's up, brother? Unfortunately, I don't see the Kings winning more games. Hey, do, I'm not sure if you guys watched post game uh, last game. What's up, Oscar? Go, Kings. Um, Post game, I said, rest the guys, rest them, get them ready. I know you're going to have to play two play in games, but uh, you might as well be fresh. I mean, Sabonis looks tired. You know, Fox dealing with an injury. He says he's not. We'll see tonight. That's going to be the ultimate test, but it's the Kings, it's the Suns. We've got it all for you. The pregame. We even got the NBA guru, too, is going to get you up to date on what's going on in the NBA in the West. Welcome to the pregame show. Sacramento missed you. Carter. Stolen by Williams. And look at this. Oh, you don't like that. You don't like NBA basketball. Fox. Goodbye. Oh, if you don't like that, you don't like NBA basketball. The exclamation point from the Eric Fox. Oh, if you don't like that, you don't like NBA Boy, that's an ESPN highlight right there. Whoa. Carlson comes in. How about this? Holy moly, Jim Bob Bowley. That is a major league smudge. Welcome back in Ryan and Sacktown here. It's the pregame show on if you don't like that halftime coming up with Jerry Reynolds and Grant Napier. Myself and Grant wrap up the night for you tonight afterwards. Uh, hopefully we're talking about a win. What do you guys think? I know there's not a lot of optimism going on. Last night was rough. The Kings lost that game in about an eight minute stretch. Whether it's hard, it's kind of hard to believe if you didn't watch the game over. The game was lost from when the Kings got into the penalty in the third quarter to about the eight, seven minute mark of the fourth. So can the Kings adjust tonight? Can they maybe find some holes in the Suns game? Look, the Suns, I don't want to get you guys filled with false confidence, but the Suns have been an inconsistent team this year as well. They've had unexplicable losses, much like the Kings so which team's going to roll in? And tonight, I'm not worried about Durant. I mean, Durant's Durant. I am worried about Booker. He is the wild card. We're going to get your chats in here first in a second. But first, let's bring in the guru. I, I was talking to him off the air. I'm like, dude, you don't usually get to come on shows with glosses, but you know your NBA guru. What's up with the West? What's going on in the NBA? Kings. Warriors, Lakers, three-way tie. That's the big news in the standings right now. 45 and 35, we've played 80 games, and it's come down to the last two games. Kings playing the Suns today. They got the Suns and the Blazers. Lakers playing the Grizzlies and the Pelicans for their last two games. And then the Warriors are playing the Pelicans and the Jazz. Whoever wins two games out of their last two pretty much will get uh, the seventh or eighth seed. We, the Kings need to have uh, two shots at being in the playoffs. That's the way to do it. And if they win their last two games, they'll be in control because they got the they got the series over the Lakers. Uh, it's right. tied with the Warriors, but we do have the better conference record. We've got a better division record. Right. So that'll, that'll kill, uh, beat those tiebreakers. But honestly, it's in our hands. We, we just got to win two games. This one's going to be tough. Next one will be a little easier quote unquote for this well, team. But, well, well, well. <laughs> but uh, hold on. looks at the crowd and says, take that. No, 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 no. I think that game, honestly, 
I think the Portland game, and it's just my take, it's going to be the harder of the two games. Tonight will be easier than the Portland game. 1230 oh. games, Portland, they don't match with the Kings. They don't. That's, I mean, that's that's a hot take. I'll, I'll give you a hot take. We Dude, got a I've fresh... been saying it for a minute. <laughs> We we got a fresh Durant and Booker. They want to they want the seventh seed for themselves. They might even want to try to get the sixth seed. That's still in play for them. So uh, we'll see, man. I mean, if we can get today's win, I think it'll be uh, I think it'll be a little bit easier on sun, Sunday. Even though it'll it'll still be tough. Every game's tough for the Kings, but you know we're not the favorite today. I think we'll, we we will be favorites on Sunday. So. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. I mean, that could change depending on what happens tonight. Thanks, Guru. We'll get back with you here in a few minutes. Uh, there's also some scenarios, too, that could see the Kings winning a couple games and say the Pelicans lose their next two. I'm serious. You could see yourself in New Orleans. Could you imagine that matchup? The Kings and the Pelicans. I, I really would not have much confidence in that. Hey, y'all, let's get your comments in here. Uh, let's see. Cody, we got you. What's up, Oscar? We got you as well. Uh, Scuba, once you looked into the salaries, it kind of ruined the game for me. Fox will make more tonight than an elementary school teacher will in six years. It's nothing new. Nothing new, Scuba. I get it. Nothing new, though. Arvin, I uh, fully agree with rest and the guys. Appreciate it, Ryan. Mike Brown doesn't. That's okay. That's why he's paid to coach the team. I am not uh, remembering Grayson. Out. Dude, Cody, I am so glad you brought that up. That is one of the guys that I am deathly worried about tonight. And really quick, let's go over this because I'm not sure if you guys caught the post that I had earlier. But actually, I had it last night. So on the post game show last night, Grant asked me, he's like, uh, why would you double? And I, I was thinking, and I'm like, well, there's a couple different reasons, but I was trying to put it into the context of why the Kings would be starting off with a double on Valanciunas. And I went back and watched the tape, and I understood what they were trying to do because we did it in college all the time. They're trying to hide the weak side defender and have them come up. And Colby Jones, uh, literally, as you drew it up, Colby did it on the first defensive play he was in but uh, he did not get the steal. But the Kings, they weren't quick enough because that's where I think, again, and I said this on the Kings court, the Kings can make up something in a transition for where they lack things without Malik Monk. But that includes getting into the passing lanes, getting 50-50 balls and such. So getting back to Grayson Allen, the reason I brought that up is you can't double anybody tonight. If Grayson Allen's on the floor, he is one of the best three-point shooters in the league at one time this season late in the season he was leading the league in three point percentage are you kidding me Grayson Allen so appreciate it Oscar uh Flores what's up dude you just want a good uh fight from the Kings you know what they gave you a good fight last night they really did let's take the emotion out of it for a second if you want to break it down to a T and I've got I, I track literally every shot you guys see that i track every shot the reason that i do that well i guess there's the front side too the reason i track every shot is because it's easier for me to identify the runs identify um the inconsistencies the consistencies than just looking at a box and you look at the start of the game the kings were ice cold right completely ice cold then it's a game of runs from there you get some runs from um the Pelicans, you get some runs from the Kings, but then you get to that third quarter where the Kings were in the penalty. Guru, I'm going to bring you back in on this. Um, you get to that third quarter where the Kings are in the penalty, and Jerry Reynolds talked about this the day before, um, how important it is for the Kings to do that. Chris Duarte takes two threes. The Kings take another three. They get some turnovers. De'Aaron then gets a technical foul. They finish the third quarter terrible. And then the fourth quarter... The Pelicans stay on their run. You guys realized between that six-minute mark of the third quarter and eight eight twenty-five of the fourth quarter, Zach, the Pelicans were fourteen of eighteen from the field, dude. Fourteen the of eighteen. The defense uh, was troublesome. I think they scored what twenty-two out of forty threes, uh, and they scored you know in the fifty percentages for the field goal and the three points. Uh, I don't know what the Kings do for getting in the paint. Uh, I don't know what, what they do. Uh, Fox, at least he went to the line, what, 10 times yesterday? And uh, I think the four games before that, he combined for nine. 
So at least he got to the free throw line. We got someone, but um, for, I mean, the only other people that can really get to the paint a little bit is what Barnes, maybe um, is there anyone else I'm missing? Well, the problem to me is the Kings don't have enough. It's not that they can't get to the paint. They don't have enough distributors right now. And in fact, they didn't have enough distributors to start the season. Now, Davion Mitchell's kind of turning into one. Um, but that to me is the bigger problem because how are you going to get to the paint if the only guy right now outside of Sabonis Fox is not deciding to, and I get, I like the comment, let's have a short memory Excel, but I mean, we've got to look at how the team's playing. I mean, two games left in the season. Crazy. This season's flown by. Um, let's see. Arvin Ryan Grant was very concerned about not getting a backup point guard before the deadline. Has Mitchell earned backup point guard role for next season? I don't know. And I think in, in chime in, Zach, I think some other chips are going to have to fall into place before the Kings decide what to do with Davion Mitchell because you, if you're going to bring Davion Mitchell back, I think it's safe to say you've got to guarantee the guy at least about 15, 20 minutes a night off the bench. Yeah, uh, man, Davion... He's been playing so well in the last couple months. His three point per shot, three point percent shot has been vastly improved. Um, is he the playmaker that we would like to as a backup point guard? Uh, I don't know. Uh, his defensively, he's great. A uh, little bit shorter than we need, but man, it, Monty's going to make have to make a big decision with that. I, I don't know. It's yeah, he 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 needs to get fifteen to twenty minutes for sure if uh, if he wants to be the backup point guard. That's what he's going to want. I don't, I just, it's, it's tough. He, he's been playing very well though, at least. And um, I kind of like, he, he tried to do a little bit of some pick and roll with Sabonis a little yeah, bit, very little. I'm glad you brought that trying. up. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. That That has been a huge hole in the Kings offense, but I, I guess the other problem too, Zach, I appreciate you coming back up. The guru is always prepared and ready to jump in. Um, But the problem that I saw was the Kings just panicked last night. They panicked at the start of the fourth quarter. Nothing more, nothing less. I mean, their shot selection at the end of the third quarter was not great. You get the turnovers, you get the fast, or you get the... It, Fox should have been ejected. Let's be real about that. Um, but it's a new night, and it is what it is. Um, uh, the other thing I wanted to say about the backup point guard role, we've been talking about that. Grant has, I have, since the trade deadline last year wasn't just this trade deadline. It was last year, and it still did not happen. Uh, Trey Lyles, good point, Mr. Asparagus. Now, that is an interesting handle. I would assume you're probably not the best-smelling person, though, Mr. Asparagus, because uh, asparagus is really good to eat, but uh, you know what happens with asparagus after that. Uh, last time the Kings had a decent defensive team was 2001-2002. Maybe uh, Davion is upping his trade value. There is no trade value for Davion right now. There's not. Um, it's you could. There's teams that want him, but there's not teams that are going to give up a lot for him. Uh, these Lakers fans say they want us, uh, and they can't beat us. A G League Greece team, pathetic. Well, uh, your Sacramento Kings almost didn't beat that same G League uh, Grizzly team, so. It happens. I think it's going to be Kings versus Lakers, Pelicans versus Warriors playing. There's our first prediction. Thank you, uh, James Her. I'm not sure. James Her. Interesting. Is that a real name? Uh, Suns lineup, full go, 100% healthy. Thanks for pointing that out, Cody. They did not have much to worry about. I know there was a couple of questions, but again, Booker is who you're looking at. Durant's who you're looking at. And the Suns, they shoot the three ball really really well um they do so make them beat you with the three ball I, I think a lot of teams end up giving or conceding the three too much to Devin Booker too much to Kevin Durant because they're worried about the penetration so the Kings should be worried about the penetration as well tonight but much like last night the game plan to me should have been let the Pelicans beat you from inside just let them hammer the ball inside Work the passing lanes the best you can. So maybe they will see that same thing tonight. You got asparagus going on the grill. Yeah, John's always got asparagus. We were talking about that. Joe, what's up, man? I remember you for last season. Coach Brown could be let go. 
uh, the first part of next season, especially if they get eliminated in the plan. I don't get off until a good start. Yeah. So here's the deal. Grant's on record saying he thinks that there will be dramatic changes. I'm not ready to go there yet. I think we got to find out what happened this year in the building. And guys, look, here's the bottom line. This team has been so um, herky-jerky. It's been so Jekyll and Hyde. We've said it all season that what makes you think that this team couldn't pull off a win or two in the play-in? They win when we don't expect them to, and they lose the games that they should win. It's the exact thing that we deal with. So there's still reason to be optimistic, but I'm still looking at De'Aaron Fox and I'm looking at that ankle because here's the deal. Let's say that ankle is just a little bit sore, right? Or let's let's actually say this. De'Aaron Fox on a good night, right? Let's look at his shot selection. It, it, he had 40 points, right? So let's look at what De'Aaron did in Oklahoma City. 17 three-pointers and he had healthy legs so what's that is that going to make him rely more on the three tonight how can the kings incorporate him into the game plan and the other thing cody look i know you're always looking at this really close stuff like i am and i noticed last night the kings had success against the pelicans when they got sabonis got barnes and i know that guru hit on barnes and also murray a little bit ago about getting them inside. I would play some pick and roll. I would play some high roll with those two. They're skilled enough for forwards that they can do it. Um, the other thing that I would be doing is I would be getting Sabonis in motion. I would be getting Harrison in motion. So those areas where they're feeding Sabonis now, because whether you realize it or not, the offense has not been running as much through Domas as it normally does. And by the way, Domas and De'Aaron, 10 turnovers combined between the two of them last night. That's got to get cleaned up. But get Domas the ball when he's moving. And I'm not saying he's got to be coming off two screens, but get him on a little curl. Get him on a little flare out so he can get to the spot that he wants to get to. I mean, he kind of gets caught in no man's land and all of the Kings sometimes get caught in no man's land. Uh, scuba feels like the only way we can get a solid player is shipping Fox or Keegan. Uh, you could do it in the draft too. Um, but I don't think Keegan's going anywhere. Fox, I, I'll be honest with you. There's teams that would want Fox, but I don't know if, I don't know that every team would jump to get De'Aaron. Like you guys think, I mean, De'Aaron's a max guy because he's in Sacramento. Would De'Aaron be a max player if he wasn't in Sacramento, if he was a part of that Clippers team, if he was a part of that Houston Rockets team? Would he be a max guy? That's a good question. I mean, is he considered when he's he is the definition? My good friend Jim Rome always tells me, give me an A or give me an F. That's what De'Aaron does. He's either excellent or he's struggling. So that's kind of tough when you've got a franchise on your shoulder. you got to be a little bit more consistent. Not all on him. I think that there's a lot of coaching, a lot of personnel changes, injuries that have affected things. Scuba, he has been busy tonight. He's predicting both games. Uh, free agents do not want to come here. We either got to get through the draft or a trade. Um, traditionally, yes, but this is a different team. You, you can't judge this team versus the 16 teams before them because they're last year they were a lot of fun to play with i know there were guys that wanted to come to sacramento just because pascal turned down sacramento that doesn't mean that other guys didn't want to come and i know that was a part of a trade um the question is do you want the right guys to come and do you have to overpay for them but yes traditionally joe is right that seems to be the case with Sacramento. Most famous case of that, Chris Weber did not want to come to Sacramento and then ended up loving it. The Grizz had Jackson and don't have him today. That's way worse. Well, I I'm not going to compare what's worse, what's not kitchen. You may be right, but the bottom line is it is a bad loss. I'm not sure where Bucky's at. Dude, never sleep. Right? He never, ever sleeps. Uh, great point, Ryan. Kevin Herter used to stay in motion all the time, and we miss him more than we realize. Yeah, to a degree. You do offensively. Uh, Indiana did not jump on Fox. See, that's what I'm saying. They turned down the trade and wanted Halliburton. Well, okay, let's be fair, too. The, a huge part of that was financial. 
Hallie was on a rookie deal. So the question becomes, if both of those guys were on equal contracts, which one would you have taken? Um, you know, we the ship sailed about Hallie versus Fox and all that. The bottom line is the two of them would not have worked out. We know that, but it's correct. Indiana did want Hallie, and I do think that there is something or some merit to what Joe is saying. Why would Siakam uh, want to go to Indiana and not sack? Um, probably personnel. I, I would say personnel because, he, yeah, personnel. I, I don't know. I didn't talk to him. I haven't talked to anybody in his camp. But my guess would be personnel because the Kings in Indiana, they're kind of on even footing. They're similar. They're up and coming. They have star point guards. Granted, Hallie is a little bit younger. Um, but yeah, um, I don't know. Where would you want to go? Take your take your Sacramento fandom out of it. Which team do you think has a chance to win a championship sooner? Leave that for the question of the day for all you. Hey, I uh, wanted to let you know too. Grant let well, you didn't let me. I just took it on. I just did the live read last night for Bennett's because we don't have cards. Look, see, my hands are up here. Up here. You can see my hands. I'm not reading anything. Uh, make sure that you guys go check out Bennett's Restaurants.com. That includes Bennett's West Side Grill in Rockland, located in the Blue Oaks Town Center. Talk about their brunch all the time. Check out their happy hour too. They've got 60 different wines by the glass, great happy hour specials. Also, some really good dining specials during the week where you can get a bottle of wine, a couple of entrees, and you can make reservations as well at Bennett'sRestaurants.com for all three locations. And I believe they're still taking Mother's Day reservations. Get to Bennett's for Mother's Day. Promise your mom will love it. Um, I, that's kind of a weird, that, that's kind of a weird thing. I, I, your mom will really like brunch at Bennett's. Anyways, hey, let's bring the guru back in. Guru, what's your score tonight? Which way are you going? I'm going Kings 120, Phoenix 110. This is, wow. this is the game of the year. This is the, the everyone Whoa. will be surprised. I'm feeling a lot of good reactions today. <laughs> Whoa, that's like Cody Rhodes stuff. You're saying this is the game of the year. The Kings are going to finish the story. Um, so. All right. You think they could put 120 up again tonight? I'm not so sure. Maybe, maybe they could. I th I th they, they, they've been doing it against Phoenix this year. So hopefully they can. I mean, honestly, it's like you guys have said, you and you and Grant, they get, they, they shoot well. They have a decent shot. So just, just chuck threes and make them. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to give you an undercover stat too. I talked about it on the Kings court. Give it to everybody as well. Offensive rebounds. The Suns are not good at offensive re or they're not good at defending other teams from getting offensive boards. The Kings excel many times at getting offensive boards. So look for that. The Kings struggled to get the offensive boards at the beginning of the game yesterday. And they had 21 against OKC, I think, uh, offensive rebounds. <laughs> yeah, and, that was but crazy. I, I, I really, yeah. I really would like to see the uh, second chance points because I feel like we got a lot of offensive rebounds, but when we gave it back for three pointers, we missed missed every single one. So <laughs> just make just make those second chance points, and uh, hopefully we'll see a W in the beam today. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Zach, thanks for making the show better tonight. I'm sure we'll see you at some point on the pregame, brother. Appreciate it. Or postgame. Excuse me. Excuse me. All right. <laughs> Later, buddy. Zach's killing it. Love having him on the pregame show. You guys enjoy having Zach here? Let me know. Appreciate that. Um, hopefully, they get a win so they can get their morale back up. I don't know if it, it just seems like morale has just been kind of whatever this year, right? It's just kind of blah. I don't know. I'd love to see an explosion by them. I mean, it's time of year. Look, here's the deal. I'm looking at the other teams in the Western Conference, right? And I'm not going to talk about scores right now and play that's going on right now, but coming into play tonight, let's look at what the Warriors have done in their last 10. Eight and two. Eight and two, y'all. How about the Lakers? And I know they lost, but seven and three before that. Um, so the Kings, five and five after last night. Uh, you might be able to argue, you really could, that the Kings are due to get a little spurt, maybe get a run. Hopefully it comes in the play in. But again, my eyeballs are going to be on De'Aaron Fox in that ankle tonight. And if I'm Coach Brown, I'm having a quick hook if De'Aaron's not looking good, if there's any extra tweaks. 
anything like that. Again, I, I think these guys should be resting until the plan. I know there's two plans to get to uh, that eight seed, but I still think you rest them. But it's okay. Hey, maybe the Kings get the momentum like you're saying. It's all good. Look, we're hoping for a great game. I think this game should be back and forth. I think the Kings are going to give the Phoenix Suns a healthy dose of zone defense. So the Kings got to find somebody on the weak side to block out. But um, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be good, guys. We're going to have coverage all night. Make sure you come back. Jerry Reynolds will be here at halftime. Looking forward to that. And Grant and I wrap up the show or wrap up the game tonight with the post game show. Really appreciate all you guys' kind comments about the content that we're doing. And again, we're going to be announcing some very fun stuff that's going to kick off either tonight or uh, in between tonight and next game. And uh, you guys will have some time to uh, get at that. We're going to have some experiences and also some really cool stuff. So I'm not going to say anything more. Grant can break the rest of the news. Uh, yeah, Scuba's with me. Scuba, he just, uh, he's just, he's just, I'm not watching. This is what's happening. I know they should rest. Okay. Scuba, I get you as a Kings fan. I get the type of Kings fan you are. So, Hey y'all enjoy the first half and we will be back at halftime. I'll be live tweeting during the first half, little stats that jump out to me. Do me a favor, if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed here to Grant's YouTube channel. Seven grand already, seven grand, 7,000 already subscribed. Um, you can get some exclusive rants. You find out about when our shows will be over there. And then also check out my podcast. That's the King's Court. It's updated daily. It's a little dose of me. It's a lot of Kings, a little bit of Jim Rome. Um, it's a lot of fun. So you get a lot of premium Kings information that you would normally need to pay for. Get it for free there on the Kings court. And I try to get you out in about 15, 20 minutes every single day. All right. Kings sons tonight. Uh, as Zach said, biggest game of the season in his eyes. I mean, it is what it is. The Kings have put themselves in this position. They've got to make the best out of it. Give them a chance. It's a new 48 minutes. We'll talk about the first 24 with Jerry Reynolds and Grant in just